Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I'm really excited to share something with you, and that is the trick to cracking open a chestnut. Now, it is that time of year, chestnuts are out there in the marketplace, you might even find them at your supermarket, and you might say to yourself, hey, I really wanna try those, but I have no idea how to crack them open. Well, it's really easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do it today. First things first, when you're buying chestnuts, at the supermarket, at the farmer's market, at your specialty market, you wanna make sure that you look for a nut that is slightly heavy for its size, that is unblemished, and that isn't moldy at all or cracked. Now, I have a few cracked chestnuts here, and I haven't cracked these myself. This is just how they came from the market, and you wanna avoid chestnuts like this. You can see that it's starting to mold the chestnut inside, so you wanna make sure to avoid these when purchasing and go for the chestnuts that have no cracks at all, they're nice and smooth, and you want to bring them home and store them in your refrigerator. Now, chestnuts are really unique. They are a part of the nut family, but unlike all of the other nuts, they actually are very high in starch as opposed to oil. So they do go bad quickly and you want to make sure that you refrigerate them. Even covered with a nice damp cloth is great. And when you're ready to crack them, this is actually a chestnut knife. You can find these online or at a specialty kitchen supply or restaurant store. Uh, and this, this chestnut knife has a, a curved tip to it, almost like a bird's beak. And this is used to score the chestnut because before you're able to actually crack it open, you need to score them and roast them. And today I'm gonna show you two different ways of roasting them. But you wanna take the flat side of the chestnut and you're gonna take the knife and you're going to create a nice long line some people even make X's to make it easier to crack open the chestnut, but you wanna make sure you do this slowly and carefully because this is a sharp knife. Now, if you didn't have this knife at home, you could use a small paring knife that would work just as well. The curve of the blade really does help though. So once you score your chestnuts, what you wanna do is you want to soak them in a little bit of water. Now, I like to soak the chestnuts for about 30 minutes. And what this does is it helps to retain the moisture inside the chestnut because again, these nuts are not hard and brittle like almonds or hazelnuts, but are kind of soft and fresh. So you want to soak them in water so that when you do roast them, they're not dry and shriveled up. So once they've soaked for about 30 minutes, what you wanna do is put them on a baking sheet and make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. You could even do them at a higher temperature, uh, but you wanna do them for a little less time. And you're going to roast these in the oven for about 35 minutes, if you're going at that 350. If you go any higher, you might wanna do them for about 25 to 30 minutes. And you're really looking for the skin of the chestnut to crack open, and you'll be able to smell, the chestnuts will start to get really fragrant, and that's when you know to pull them out. So these are gonna go right into that 350 degree oven again for about 35 minutes. Now, the second method, if you really love chestnuts, you can go and find one of these chestnut pans. Now, chestnut pans are perforated. They have holes in the bottom of the pan and they're meant to sit over either an open fire, which that's where the song comes from, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, but you could certainly do this on your uh, stove top if you have a gas range, which is what I have here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the soaked chestnuts, put them into the basket or the pan itself, and then you're gonna roast these over a medium heat until they start to crack and blister and you'll be able to smell them. So you want to shake the pan every so often to move the chestnuts around, flipping them over, and you'll start to smell them toasting. You'll start to smell them blistering and they will begin to crack open with the heat as they are doing now. Um, and this takes maybe like five to six minutes. You don't want to do this on too high of a heat because you really will burn the chestnuts. Um, so a medium heat is really the best. And the smell is actually one of the most amazing things because it really does smell almost a little spicy, like nutmeg. All right, now these are done. I'm gonna let them cool slightly and I'm gonna start peeling the ones that I've roasted in the oven. They're still warm because you wanna peel the chestnuts while they're warm. You can see that they've cracked open along the score or the cut that we created with the chestnut knife. And really all you're gonna do is peel back this tough outer shell 
And the chestnuts have a little bit of a skin to them as well, kind of like a hazelnut. They have a skin underneath the shell and in between the flesh of the, the nut. And you just need to peel that away. And chestnuts, you guys, I haven't really talked about what they're good for, but they're fantastic in stuffings. Um, they can be thrown into a food processor with a little bit of sugar to create a wonderful chestnut paste that's really delicious in a lot of baked goods. It pairs really well with a lot of autumnal fruits like apples and pears, and chestnuts and chocolate are a really fantastic combination. Really what you're looking for, and the reason why I love to soak them is it maintains the structure of the chestnut itself and it keeps the chestnut really nice and moist. Uh, so this is really what you're looking for here. I'm gonna try and peel one of these guys. They're still a little hot and the roasted chestnuts over the burner really have a distinct flavor and smell to them. So if you do have a chance to buy one of these pans and use them, ultimately your chestnuts are gonna taste even better because they have that kind of fire kissed flavor to them. And you're just gonna peel them the exact same way. See that papery skin peels right off. If you don't find fresh chestnuts, you can certainly find alternatives in the supermarket. There are jarred versions. There are also um, vacuum packed pouches like the one I have here. Now they don't have that same wonderful flavor as freshly roasted chestnuts, but they are suitable if you were using them in a baked good or a you know holiday stuffing. Uh, they'll be just as fine. There you go, guys. I hope I've taught you how to prepare a chestnut at home. Look out for these unique tools. You can certainly find them online. And if you guys have any questions, if you're finding any unique produce or fruits in the supermarket and you want some help in understanding what you should do with them, reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. We love helping you solve all of those problems. Enjoy, guys. Hi guys, as some of you may have noticed, we're getting close to 1 million subscribers. Isn't that amazing? It's awesome. So if you guys like our shows and you want to see more videos like these, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Or click here to check out more great recipes on MarthaStewart.com.